Hey everybody, uh, this is AP Calculus AB. Uh, our next topic is topic 1.2, defining limits and using limit notation. We're continuing in chapter one, unit one, which is limits and continuity. Please enjoy. All right, today we are starting section 1.2, which is on defining limits and using limit notation. We're gonna first start off by uh, talking about what a limit is. Um, in general, we write a limit as follows. So this would be a general limit statement. And if we were to try to read this statement out loud, or this, this uh, limit statement, we would read this as the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. One thing I'd emphasize about this being a limit statement is that uh, pretty much this whole left side is one thing. I think very frequently uh, when, when people are looking at uh, limits for the first time, we sometimes get uh, focused on the fact that it says like f of x is equal to l, and sometimes we try to think about separating this limit uh, statement off. Um, but in fact, it is one thing uh, that limit as x approaches c of f of x. It's all together. It's all part of this meaning uh, of, of what a limit is, and, and we're going to talk about what this means in context. Um, so let's do that. So the informal definition, so I'm going to just say informally, which means we're going to get a better mathematical definition at some point, but we're not ready for it quite yet. So informally, a limit means as x gets really close I'm going to emphasize really, really close to some number C. The Y value, so the Y values of the function f of x get really close to L. really close, and I'm going to emphasize really again, really close to some number L. So again, as x gets really close to some number C, the y values of the function f of x get really close to some number L. And so this is written as a statement, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. Now sort of a conclusion for this, or sort of a really key piece uh, for this, is that limits, so I'll even say conclusion, the key piece is that limits are simply y values. that a function is getting closer to. So limits are simply y values that a function is getting closer to. We're going to use that for our notes for today and we're going to uh, we're going to move on to the next part uh, which is going to be our guided notes. And so we're going to discuss, again, 1.2 defining limits, and we're going to try to use what we just talked about in order to answer these problems. Now we notice uh, we see sort of three graphs here. So I'm seeing one graph, two graphs, three graphs uh, that are all pretty much the exact same graph, except here we've got uh, something going on. Uh, we've got something going on here, and we've got something going on here that looks a little bit different. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to emphasize both of those uh, as we go through. Um, so, let's start off first with this prompt at the top. It says, as x approaches blank, f of x approaches blank. And we're taking a look at this limit statement that's here on the left. We notice that the x value is approaching 
the number two. So as x approaches two, and if we take a look at two on that, uh, on that x-axis, if we look up, we see that the point that it's at, the y value, is at one. So as x approaches two, f of x is equal, is approaches one. And that's actually true uh, for, well, for this first statement, so we're gonna write that out. So as a, a, the limit as x approaches two of f of x is in fact equal to one. Similarly, f of two, this is just asking us what is the actual output, so what is the output of the function when x is equal to two? And in that case, we see, you know, since it's filled in at that particular point, that is one. And so we have an example here where both the limit and the function are equal to each other. Sometimes that's true, and sometimes that's not true. Uh, let's take a look at the second example. So we're looking at the second example here, and we notice that this has a particular feature here in this. It has a, a, a hole in the graph, which formally is what's called a removable discontinuity. Removable discontinuity. And again, non-mathematically, we just call this a hole in the graph. Now, if we think about the limit for this, we're saying uh, as x approaches 2, so I'm, if I think about approaching 2 from both sides, what y value is this getting closer to? Well, as x approaches 2, if I follow the function, we see from the left and from the right, it is going towards this y value. And where is that y value? Well, that y value is still at y is equal to 1. So in this case, we would say the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is still 1 for this graph, even though it has a hole in it. Now, the second question is where it gets a little bit more interesting, right? We said that f of 2 is asking us the output when x is equal to 2. If I look at exactly when x equals 2 and I go up, there is no actual value there. So because of that, we would say that f of 2 is undefined for that particular graph, because there is no output when x is equal to 2, when it's exactly equal to 2. In our third problem, if we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, again, we can think coming from the uh, left side and from the right side as x approaches 2. If we think about following that graph from the left and from the right for that x value, we can see here that it still goes to this exact same y value that is here at y is equal to 1. So interestingly enough, even though this graph also has a removable discontinuity, All three of these graphs have a limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, which is equal to 1. Now, in our previous one, in number 2, we saw that it was undefined. And the reason it was undefined is because there is no output when x is equal to 2. But here we notice when x is equal to 2 that, in fact, there actually is an output. It's just all the way up here at y is equal to 3. So in this case, when x is equal to 2, the y value is 3. Um, and so we can see uh, that that is going to be our value for the function f of 2 is equal to 3. Moving on to the next part, we're going to talk about uh, doing these, these same values uh, and, and work through this process. Um, I think that graphically, you know, doing limits, you can do limits a couple of different ways. You can do them with tables, you can do them with graphs, you can do them with uh, equations and um, algebraic expressions. Uh, graphically is, is a good way to like intuitively begin to learn what a limit is. Next lesson in 1.3, we're going to talk about what the exact mathematical definition of a limit is. All right, so let's start with number one. Number one says the limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to what? So in this case, I'm looking at one and I'm thinking about from the left side and I'm thinking about from the right side. I'm imagining moving along this function towards that x value and we see that that has a y value of negative one is that limit. It doesn't matter that there's a hole in that graph. Uh, it doesn't matter that there's a removable discontinuity there. The y values of the graph is approaching that y value from the left side and from the right side. So that is what the limit is going to be equal to. 
Also, uh, it doesn't matter that, that, that there's like an open circle there or anything like that. That is not part of it being a limit. It's just sort of where it is approaching. All right, next up we've got uh, f of negative 3. Uh, for the second problem, f of negative 3. Now, because there's no limit here in this problem, f of negative 3 is just asking me what the output is when x equals negative 3. If I go to negative 3, we notice that there is an output that's right here that has a height or y value of 0. So that is going to be the output for this function when x is equal to negative 3. For our third problem, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, uh, if we take a look at our graph, as x approaches 2 from the left and from the right, this appears to be going to a y value of 2. And it, But if they ask us where f of 2 is, again, this does not have a limit for problem number 4. And this is essentially asking us what is the y value when x is in fact 2. And we can see that if we go all the way up here, we can see that there's an, uh, a filled in uh, circle at y is equal to 3. So that is going to mirror f of 2 is equal to 3. f of 1, if we take a look at that, let me sort of clear off uh, what we've written on here just so we can get rid of all of that stuff. Um, we notice that when x is equal to 1, there is no actual y value. There's nothing that's filled in at that particular point. So because of that, we would say that this is undefined. Undefined, there is no actual output when x is equal to 1. For number 6, f of negative 2 is equal to what? So the output of the function when x is negative 2, we can see is up here, and that has a height of 2. That is going to be our actual output for that. For problem number seven, the limit as x approaches zero. Similarly, I think I'm going to erase what we've got uh, written so far. When x approaches zero from the left, so zero on the x-axis would be down here. And if we're coming from the left and from the right, it looks like we're heading towards that point right there, which has a height of negative two. That would be our limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. And then finally for number 8, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. Well, if we're looking at negative 3 right here, coming from the left and coming from the right, if we follow that function from the left or from the right, those looks like it's going to the same spot as those arrows approach x equals negative 3, and that has a height of positive 1. And so that is going to be our uh, limit uh, as x approaches negative 3. So then it says, given interpretation of the statement, limit as x approaches 7 of f of x is equal to 10. So an interpretation of this uh, would be sort of tying back into our informal definition of limit. So as x approaches 7, the values of the function, so the y values of the function, get really close to 10. So as x approaches 7, the y values of the function get really close to 10. All right, last part for today's notes. A limit does not tell us the value of f of x. So a limit does not tell you the value of f of x. We sort of saw in these ones up here that the limit and the f of x values at the same number are not necessarily the same. Sometimes they are, but they are not always the same. It just tells us what the function approaches. So true or false, is f of 1 equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x in all cases? So that is false. We saw some uh, ones where the limit and the output are not the same. So for example, uh, number two up here, we saw where the limit and the output were not the same value, or even here in number three, the limit and the output are not the same value. So that is not true. And they're saying that uh, in, in the second one, f of one is not equal to the limit in all cases. Well, that's also false because our first example uh, up here in number one, we saw that sometimes in fact that the limit and the uh, actual function value can be the same, uh, and, and that's an example there. So it's not 
always, uh, I think sort of the keywords here are all cases. Uh, it, neither of those things are true. Neither are, are they always the same or are they always different. It depends on the case of what, what you're looking at. And so uh, we just need to keep in mind two things. Again, the limit is the, uh, is the y value that the graph is approaching. And the function itself is asking about the actual coordinate. What is the actual point? What is the y value when the x value equals that exact number? All right, that's going to be it for today. Uh, again, you can continue on with practice. Uh, I'm going to post the solutions for this for you to check this as well. Uh, and good luck. Have a good day.